Building for Eternity on the Foundation of Christ. I think boldness is that thing that happens when you cross over a line of fear. Um, you're on this side of, of life where everything is fairly predictable and you can manage things and you do things and you know what the outcome will be, but you, you've got this line of fear. And on the other side of it, I think that's where boldness is. Being sort of courageous and forthright in talking about something you believe in. Being prepared to seek out opportunities to speak of the things that God has done for you in your life and to share your faith with others. Having the gumption to do, do something that's difficult. Um, the trouble with boldness is it looks very similar to stupidity. And I think that's what sometimes stops us from stepping over that line. But actually, sometimes when you cross over that line of fear, incredible things can happen that won't happen if you stay on this side where everything is safe and known. To be honest, in the UK is in general, I think we're quite passive. Um, I think that there's a lot of sort of, oh, I don't want to offend anybody, I don't want to upset anybody. Uh, I think probably we're a little bit pathetic. I think um, we're very much uh, keeping your faith to yourself and uh, people go to church but don't speak much about their faith outside of church. I think we're sometimes a bit cautious, a bit afraid to cause offence rather than speaking boldly about how good God is to us. Four? Is it too harsh? Mm. Five? Five? Probably a five. Yeah, not bad, but could do a lot better. It would be unfair to say that the whole of the UK and all the church members in it and everybody is, there are obviously individuals doing great work, but I think there's a lot of kind of, oh, don't upset people. I rate the church quite highly on the boldometer. Um, there aren't many groups of people that go against their culture and that go against their time to come out of their houses every Sunday in their droves, in their thousands in this country, to go and get together to sing songs about Jesus, to read from the Bible still 2,000 years later and to proclaim Jesus as Lord. I think that requires a lot of boldness. I, I think there's always ways uh, we can be more bold and um, there's, there's room for improvement, but I don't think that we should be down on ourselves. I've been very privileged to have situations which God has orchestrated for me, in which I've been able to share my faith with people, um, either in groups or as individuals. And um, it's exciting when we reach a point and I'm able to, to give a challenge and to ask the question, would you like to give your life to Jesus? Not a specific time, but times in the shop, very often I feel that God, is, as I say I'm a barber in Clevedon, and very often we have conversations in the shop about simple things. It can be sort of just, um, what did you do at the weekend? Or, um, you know, say going to church, or if there's like events on in the square that the Baptist church does, you get that little lump in your throat, and your heart beats a little bit faster. And I don't know, maybe that's not normal, I don't know, but for me it is. And I just think, oh, I'm going to have to have this conversation now. And I'm not prepared for it, and God just throws it at you. It is a scary moment because at that point, uh, when you've shared your faith and when you challenge an individual or a group, you're really laying things down on the line. It could go badly, it could go really well, but if we don't step over that line, we'll just never know. Why, why do you believe that then? What's, what's all that going on? And I, you get this moment, <clears throat> I think we all get a choice moment. Do I shy away from this? Or, or do I sort of be bold? And I think they're the times that God calls us to be bold. And I, I must admit there are times when I, I do shy away, like a lot of humans do. And there are other times that actually God says, I need you to do this, I need you to evangelise, I need you to, to, to say this, I need to use this conversation. I'm very, very nervous beforehand and I feel um, very sick and all of those things, but the moment that I step into the place where I know that I'm supposed to be, whether that's in the pulpit, whether that is um, taking charge of a conversation in the group, or whether that is challenging an individual, I just know that I'm in the right place and that I'm doing the right thing for God at that time. That little arrow prayers, they're always a favourite of mine, kind of help. And then I find myself sort of saying, actually, 
you know, I believe this because and God does love you and God loves me and, you know, you may not understand it, but this is my faith and this is how I feel. And I don't expect people to drop to their knees and suddenly become a Christian, although that would be wonderful. But like, I think maybe in years to come, we might think of that conversation like, oh, I remember Damien saying something about that. And it's just God using that bit of boldness as part of a bigger plan to make somebody's life different. And they get a great haircut. Absolutely. Great haircut. Great. I think it's possible for everybody to grow in boldness. Uh, we just need to seek out those possibilities um, and be prepared to share what God's doing in our lives with whoever we're with just to seek every opportunity and once we start telling people about how Jesus affects our lives and the love and the strength and the encouragement and the, um, the friendship he gives people want to know more and once we start praying for people and telling people we're praying for them they will ask you to pray for them practice um, just I would imagine like anything keep 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 doing it and it gets easier uh, maybe not a lot easier but a little bit easier it's like going to the gym and the more you push weights and the more you do running and that exercise you become fitter i think in that way like if if you spend more time doing what being with god and doing things that god wants you to do and thinking like god thinks boldness comes as a result of that because you're more in tune with the Holy Spirit and more in tune with what he's thinking. So training, I suppose, boldness training. Now you can quote that, boldness training. The more I've spoken to them and they haven't rejected me, the more I felt bold to speak to them some more about it. And when they've been in times of need, in time of need it's generally been me, me they've come to, to um, ask for help and support and friendship and prayer and that sort of thing so I think the more the more you do the more you do because it's a ever-increasing circle really don't just say things don't just sort of you know I, I find myself sort of going oh yeah I went to church and we did this and we did that and we did that and you just go through the motions of what you did but actually just sort of remember like you're talking for God try and be passionate about it don't just sort of say and that that sort of growing in passion for God Will help you to become more bold it is like a muscle and it's something that we need to try and we need to push and i think god will bless the things that he has planned for us to be doing when we step out into boldness and so i think with every positive result from our boldness it will spur us on to go for that again and we go forward into boldness with god's assurance that he's there with us one way or another that um, it wasn't ever going to be wasted to step out into boldness.